Hello there. Welcome to Just the Dis. I'm talking about Blu-rays here. And um, for this video, for this episode, I'm going to talk about um, the most recent package I got from Vinegar Syndrome. And uh, that is... Got some really good stuff. Um, this would be this package for, I guess, officially uh, July as we're moving into August now, uh, in, in August. And um, I'm going to start in an unusual way with this box. It's a big box of stuff. And I'm going to start with a couple partner label titles that I want to highlight first before you guys <laughs> click away from the video because I really do think um, these are two that I'm incredibly excited about. One of which I've gotten to dig into and one that I'm excited to dig into. And I'm going to start with the one I'm excited to dig into. And I hope to do a proper video on this one itself. And that is the new Fun City Editions release of Heartbreakers, which is a Bobby Roth film. It is from 1984, I believe. And um, I'll leave this up here the lovely slipcase, uh, it is really a gem. Now, I haven't seen it in about a year uh, when I saw it for the first time on a not-so-great um, VHS rip because this film hasn't had a great history of physical media releases, but as excited as I get for Fun City releases, this is one I'm really excited about because it's one that I'm familiar with, and I know that they did a lovely job with their restoration, which is a new 2K restoration from the 35mm interpositive. Uh, so this movie going to look better than it's ever looked before. And it's a fascinating story about a Los Angeles painter played by uh, Peter Coyote and his buddy, a businessman sort of type guy, played by Nick Mancuso, who's an actor I think people aren't as familiar with, but I know him from movies like uh, Ticket to Heaven, which is a really great film that I do hope will get some kind of better DVD release. The DVD release it got is pretty bare bones, and it's a better film than that. It's about uh, one of a couple films that came out in the, I think, early 80s about cults, people getting sucked into cults and getting brainwashed, and there was this film and Split Image uh, that... I think are both really good examples of that. Ticket to Heaven might be the better of the two, and they're both really harrowing films. Uh, but Nick Bancuso is great in that film. So anyway, these two guys are best friends. They live in Los Angeles. This is a great L.A. movie. And they sort of are very competitive and commiserative. Uh, and they, you know, between the racquetball court and the singles bars, uh, but... The painter, his name's Blue, Arthur Blue, he goes by Blue, that's Peter Coyote, uh, his longtime girlfriend leaves him, and she's played by the wonderful Catherine Harold, who is one of my favorite actors, uh, part of Modern Romance, one of my favorite comedies. Um, she leaves him for a more successful artist, played by Max Gale. And uh, the... There's another. I don't want to give away all the stuff that that's talked about in the back here. There's more complications that come into play, let's say, and it's a film that to to me is not really so much about plot as it is about the characters and the way they interact. It is a bromance in the truest sense of the word, in that it is about this friendship and this relationship that goes beyond what we're used to seeing in your traditional buddy movie. And it's hard to even explain exactly how that works, but it, it just, it's a really well rendered friendship between these two men. That's, that's just plays out so perfectly in this film. Um, filmmaker Bobby Roth, I guess, based his screenplay on his own experiences growing up and working in LA. And there's some fun LA specific location stuff here that I really dig. Uh, and the film sort of reflects in his insider's view of the city and um, it evokes the mood of European relationship dramas. That's well put. That's on the back here. Um, it's shot by Michael Ballhaus, who worked with Martin Scorsese, and is a beautiful uh, and wonderful cinematographer. 
he also obviously worked with Fassbender. That's his probably most famous collaboration. Um, and pioneering electronic musicians, Tangerine Dream, do the score. They also did the scores to Thief, Risky Business, uh, Sorcerer, um, The Keep. Really great music uh, from them. And um, it's just a really, really neat film. It's just like I said, it's one that we were asked to watch it for a very special Patreon episode of Pure Cinema. And it was one of the most delightful discoveries to make that way. This particular patron, his father was a huge fan of the film. And so as a tribute to his dad, he asked us to watch the film and talk about it on a Patreon episode that we still have in our Patreon exclusive um, material. Um, but it was great. We both loved the film. It was just a wonderful discovery. And um, so I'm so happy that this is getting such a wonderful release. As usual, not only does it get a nice restoration, but it gets some lovely features, uh, including um, a newly filmed video interview with director Bobby Roth, uh, a newly filmed interview with stars Peter Cowdy and Nick Mancuso. They get the two stars of the film, a video introduction by director Bobby Roth, an isolated music track, a booklet with new essays by DJ and journalist Margaret Barton Fumo, and film historian Richard Harlan Smith, who I'm a big fan of. Shout out to Richard Harlan Smith. Uh, newly recorded audio commentary, and this is super exciting, by filmmaker Chris O'Neill, again, uh, somebody I've talked about on this channel a lot, and friend of me, my own, uh, and uh, a guy I'm a huge fan of, Bill Ackerman, of the Supporting Characters podcast which I have been on and which I highly recommend not listening to my episode, but the other episodes where he talks to people like Kim Newman, uh, Sam Deegan, just tons of wonderful folks who do these kind of Blu-ray features and all have interesting, compelling stories about their history with film and everything that they do. So um, Chris O'Neill, who I know is a huge fan of this film, and Bill Ackerman talking about supporting, talking about Heartbreakers is going to be a commentary I know I'm going to very much enjoy. So I wanted to highlight that first and foremost. Fun City Editions, one of my favorite boutique labels, doing great work. Check them out. Now, one more boutique label, sort of um, partner label release, is one of my favorites from this year already, and I haven't even gotten through all the features, and that's Heavy Metal Parking Lot. This is from um, uh, Circle Collective as part of the OCN Distribution Network, the partner labels over at Vinegar Syndrome. Heavy Metal Parking Lot, <laughs> such a great documentary, <laughs> and it's only uh, about 17 minutes long. I always remember it as longer, but it's very short. This is some really great custom artwork for this release, and here is the actual Blu-ray itself. Now, this is something special because, in fact, I'm going to switch this out so I can read you all the stuff you get with this release. Again, one of my favorite releases of the year. Heavy Metal Parking Lot is a short documentary made by um, uh, Jeff Krulik and uh, I always remember Jeff Krulik uh, and his co-director, um, please forgive me, I'll find it in a second. Uh, but anyway, so these two guys borrow some video equipment uh, on, I want to say, it looks like May 31st, 1986. They drive down uh, John Hain. Excuse me, John. Uh, these are the co-directors of this and, and the many documentaries included here. They drive down to suburban uh, Maryland to this um, venue to a parking lot where a Judas Priest concert is about to happen. And they just take the video camera around. Sometimes they tell people they're from MTV. Sometimes they tell them they're from cable TV and they just get a sense of the people in this parking lot. And it is quite the document. And by that, I mean, it is really people in the truest form of the sense behaving and looking as they would have in 1986. Most of them drunk, saying things about Judas Priest, saying things about music, saying things about their own lifestyles and life philosophies. And it is truly wild with just a bunch of people that become iconic characters after you've seen the film. And it's just great. And I love Head Metal Parking Lot. I've owned it on boot. It was distributed, I think, primarily on bootleg copies on VHS. 
by people who were either in music or into music and they <laughs> they would just pass it around and then it got released on DVD which I picked up and now this wonderful Blu-ray. Now uh John Hayne and Jeff Krolick have gone on to do a ton of other short documentaries and this set is basically a compilation of those. It's a two disc set and it includes tons of stuff as you can see here. So you have heavy metal parking lot, you have heavy heavy metal basement, which is this this dude in this basement going through his heavy metal collection, Uh, heavy metal picnic, which is based on a rock concert that was put on in a, on a farm in, I want to say 1985 and it's sort of a revisitation of that event. And it was, you know, sold as like another Woodstock. And it is also fascinating because they have lots of, you know, video footage from the time. And then they have the folks that are in that video footage um, that they've been able to find sort of revisiting it. And it's pretty good. I had never seen Heavy Metal Picnic. That's fascinating. Neil Diamond Parking Lot, which is a return to the same parking lot, I believe, as Heavy Metal Parking Lot 10 years later. Now a Neil Diamond concert is going on. You know, that's about an 11 or 12 minute film. And you've got a totally different crowd. Older folks, a lot of older women talking about how much they love Neil Diamond. Great character stuff there too. Runs a great contrast to Heavy Metal Parking Lot. Uh, Then you have Harry Potter Parking Lot. That's pretty self-explanatory. The HMPL exhibit opening from 2016, which is wonderful. It's like a uh, an actual museum exhibit, exhibit talking about and showcasing Heavy Metal Parking Lot. And there's a great Q&A with the filmmakers. Uh, with Jim Healy, who's a wonderful film programmer now at the University of Wisconsin, uh, who um, I'm a big fan of his, talking to both the filmmakers about Heavy Metal Parking Lot. Heavy Metal Parking Lot includes a commentary track. Um, then you have, uh, let's see here, there's a Zoom party with people they've been able to find from the original Heavy Metal Parking Lot. There's an animated Heavy Metal Parking Lot. There's a Where Are They Now, where they have a bunch of the guys that are in Heavy Metal Parking Lot talking to them in 2006 or something like that. Uh, Lost Footage, Last Days of the Capitol Center, which is where the film was made, where the parking lot was, now is gone. Uh, Return to Heavy Metal Basement. And then a bunch more other films. Uh, Ernest Borgnine on the Bus, Girls on Film, I, I Created Lancelot Link, Invocation of My Demon, um... Bus Driver, King of Porn, King of Porn 2, Led Zeppelin played here, The Real Pinball Wizard, and then Scenes from the Last Drive-In, Led Zeppelin, Treasure Test, Punk, and Tomatoes. You can't take that picture here, uh, pictures here. Uh, All kinds of extra stuff from these filmmakers in one set. Two discs, nice little booklet. It is really one heck of a set. So wanted to showcase those before I even get into the vinegar syndrome stuff um, because I was so excited about both of those releases. Those are for me, my two favorite releases from this month. Uh, And and there's a lot of good stuff in this, this box. So that is supposed to be high praise. Okay. So let's get into the vinegar syndrome releases themselves. We have writing wrongs, uh, a really great martial arts film. This, uh, wonderful thick book that comes with it beautiful stuff um a nice slip case great artwork on that um so now this one uh is a two disc set and it stars uh martial arts legends yuan bao and uh cynthia rothrock uh in this um Really great action movie. I have, Again, another one I haven't seen in years, <clears throat> but I'm very excited for this Vinegar Syndrome edition. Um, and it's it's got a lot of extra stuff here. Uh, there's actually three discs in this set. Um, so it's about a prosecutor who's always looked followed by rule of law, but has recently found himself frustrated by the ineffectiveness of the court system and has pushed to the edge by the murder of a key witness with it, uh, along with the um, witness's entire um, family. Um, so fed up with the uh, murders, he 
his actions catch the interest of CID inspector Cindy C. That's Cynthia Rock, Rothrock and her slovenly new partner as uh, known as Stink Egg. Uh, while trying to stop them, uh, Cindy uncovers who is really behind the recent murders and the two must put aside their differences in order to take down the criminals or organization before they go unpunished. Heavily re-edited and released in different versions throughout the world, Writing Wrongs uh, released in an English-friendly version under the title Above the Law, which I think is the version I saw, is one of the more infamous Hong Kong action films to be released in the 80s, directed by prolific action director uh, Corey Yuen. Writing Wrongs explodes into jaw-dropping fight choreography and features strong performances by Yuen Bao, Cynthia Ronrock, Rothrock, Corey Yuen, and Melvin uh, Wong, along with uh, scene-stealing fight cameos by Peter Cunningham and Karen Shepard. Vinegar Syndrome is extremely proud to present Writing Wrongs on Blu-ray, featured featuring three different cuts of the movie, including both of the darker end, sort of both the darker ending, as well as the more audience-friendly ending, uh, and loaded with multitude of special features exclusive to the three-disc release, including the seldom-seen Best of Martial Arts feature-length documentary from 1990, which includes several interviews and footage from the stars of Writing Wrongs. So you can see there, I can't even go through all that stuff. Uh, the multiple cuts of the films and um, interviews, including um, an interview with Cynthia Rothrock, uh, Best of Martial Arts documentary on the third disc. I mean, this just looks fantastic. So I haven't seen all the cuts of the movie, but uh, I'm definitely excited to check that out. And obviously a really great booklet included here. And I love the side-loading um, Vinegar Syndrome slipcase that goes goes with this one. So that's exciting for martial arts fans. Uh, even more exciting for me is um, Shriek of the Mutilated. Now, this movie, piece by piece by piece, the bodies vanish in Shriek of the Mutilated. This was recommended to me by um, longtime programmer and friend Phil Blankenship as part of, you know, some of the better... Yeti Bigfoot movies that are available out there. And this one has also not really been available in um, great versions um, in terms of the, the actual release uh, for a long time. And so this is getting a newly scanned and restored in 4K uh, release from its 35 camera negative. Um, and it's it's just nuts. This is just a bonkers movie. If you're into bonkers, insane stuff, you can see like a Yeti screaming out a window on the corner there and just bizarre stuff. It's one of those movies that you watch it and you almost can't believe it's a movie. It doesn't always make sense, but it is a blast and I'm so psyched to be seeing this. Um, anthropology professor Dr. Pell has invited his class to a remote cabin in the mountains to research the mythical abominable snowman. Soon after they arrive, strange events begin to befall the students, including sightings of a huge white furry creature. Uh, when several members of the group go missing, only to be discovered dead, their bodies horribly mangled. Fears mount that the legendary monster is very real and out for blood, but is everything as simple as it appears. Um, so along with Night of the Demon, um, this is one of my favorite um, Bigfoot movies. And it's just bizarre, low-rent gore, weird film twists, and lots of crazy stuff. Um, so this has a new commentary track with cinematographer Roberta Finley, great filmmaker in her own right, uh, moderated by film historian Casey Scott. Yeti again, a brand new interview with Roberta Finley, 13 minutes. So bad, it's so great, 22 minutes. A brand new interview with uh, producer and co-writer Ed Adlam. The Wilds of Westchester, a 14-minute location featurette for this one. In an audio essay by cryptozoology author uh, David Coleman, 30 minutes, as well as reversible artwork. Um, but this, to me, it's just a real cult item and a crazy horror movie that you got to see. Just, this is, trust me, if you like the bonkers stuff, Shriek of the Mutilated. <clears throat> Next up, I apologize, I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this. Uh, this is... Uh, Kiss Me Monster, a.k.a. Two Undercover Angels. This is a Jess Franco movie. Um, I'm not the biggest Jess Franco fan, but, uh, you know, I will watch this as it was part of the set. Um, and this is, 
I guess, a stylish pop art infused horror styled caper of some sort, uh, in collaboration with producer and actor Adrian Hoven. Uh, and, uh, so if you're into Jess Franco, again, I'm not going to go into this one too much, but 4k, um, new scan and restored in 4k from 35 millimeter negatives. I mean, it's two movies is the thing. Um, so you get two over undercover angels, AKA sadist erotica and red lips, and then kiss me monster. And they're sort of connected. And anyway, again, not going to spend a lot of time on Jess Franco on this channel, but if you're into him, uh, I'm sure these will be interesting. Moving on to some of the other uh, releases from the partner labels. We have another one from Agfa and Something Weird. Always a great combo. Uh, Satan's Children, The Bizarre Secrets of the Lunatic Cult. Uh, and um, this is another one that I didn't really know anything about. And um, it is a 2K preservation from the only known 35mm theatrical print in existence. Um, and it is, uh, from 1975, um, made by one and done filmmakers in the shadows of Tampa. Satan's children feels like an after school special from the depths of hell. Literally, uh, Bobby's a troubled teen with problems after deflecting his father's insults and his sister's come ons. Bobby unknowingly ends up at a gay bar before long. He's assaulted by four guys in the back of seat of a car. With nowhere else to turn, Bobby joins a cult of Satanists to enact his murderous revenge. A truly deranged gut plunge. Uh, this is uh, a gritty and baffling horror experience that could only have happened uh, in Florida. Agfa and Something Weird are thrilled to prevent, present, <laughs> not prevent, a thrilled, uh, blah, a 2K preservation, as I said, from the 35 print. This has a commentary by film, uh, queer film historian Elizabeth Perchell and Afghas Brett Berg. That'll be great. I'm looking forward to that commentary track, as well as a cast and crew reunion Q&A. A bonus TV special, the Weird, the Weird World of Weird from 1970, 47 minutes, transferred from the original Something Weird SVHS Master. And a bonus short, short film, Satan in Church. Another bonus short, Boys Beware. Uh, so you get two shorts, a TV special. I mean... Agfa, come on, guys. I just got to say, they continue to be one of the best partner labels out there and one of the most interesting in terms of the kind of cinema they consistently bring um, through their Blu-ray releases. They just do a wonderful job. They make it worth your money in terms of if you're into this kind of cinema, you're going to get a good, healthy, healthy dose of it. You're going to get some commentaries. You're going to get interviews, extra films. They just do a great job. So uh, I always look forward to the new Ag for releases. Satan's Children looks wonderful. Then we have uh, another one of my favorite um, of those uh, partner labels is, of course, Canadian International Pictures. This one is called Don't Let Angels Fall. Uh, and you get to see the um, slipcase there. And uh, I love that cover. And they are putting out a lot of films. Again, I haven't heard of a lot of these. Um, this one is from 1969. It's, uh, <laughs> let's see here, Haunted by me my, uh, by Memories of a Recent Affair. Securities advisor Robert Harrison feels a growing sense of alienation from his wife Myrna and their sons uh, Michael and, G and Guy. As Michael embraces radical politics and Guy becomes dangerously isolated from his peers, Robert remains largely oblivious, distracted by visions of his recent mistress uh, and other infidelities. As confidence in Robert fades, the family spirals out of control, which paves the way for shocking perception-shifting discovery. I'm absolutely fascinated. I'm very curious what this is going to be like. The first Canadian film to compete for the Palme d'Or at the Cannes Film Festival. This remarkable feature directorial debut by George Cazander, uh builds on the experiments of Michelangelo Antonioni and Alan Rene to deliver an impressively modern, unsentimental look at uh, family dysfunction and midlife malaise. With an original screenplay by celebrated novelist Timothy Finley, uh, Don't Let the Angels Fall taps into the existential, existential currents of the 60s. Literary icons John Updike and John Cheever uh, to deliver a haunting, evocative, 
occasionally psychedelic experience. Wow, this has just shot to the top of my list of things I want to check out from this month. Um, just fascinating um, summary of this film. Scanned and restored in 2K from its 35mm inner positive. Features an audio commentary with actor John Michelson. Five short films directed by George Cassander. Uh, Ballerina, 1964, 28 minutes. Phoebe, 1964, 28 minutes. You're No Good, 1965, 28 minutes. And Little White Crimes, 1966, 28 minutes, as well as The Game. These are all about 30 minute shorts um, from 68. And then the shortest of the shorts, uh, Impressions of Expo 67 from 1967, 8 minutes. And a bonus short, Toys, 1967, 8 minutes. So you get just a full meal of. George Cassander uh, work here, which is really cool. I, I want to praise Canadian or International Picture f for the work they're doing in, in doing these wonderful sets where you're getting multiple films from a filmmaker or a collection of shorts like the French New Wave short set they did, or you get two films in comment. I mean, they're doing it right, folks. I really love the Canadian International Pictures releases so far in terms of everything they're including and the types of films. Um, this has a booklet featuring a Cassander tribute by Ron Sillig and a new essay by Cheryl Grace, uh, author of TIFF, The Life of Timothy Finley, uh, as well as reversible cover artwork. So um, this sounds fascinating. You know, the uh, comparisons to Antonioni and uh, Alan Rene and those authors that were mentioned, John Cheever and John Updike, I just can't wait to dive into this. I don't know if that su summation draws you in, but, like, for me, like, that kind of drama really sounds fascinating to me. So uh, another really cool looking release from Canadian International Pictures. Good stuff. Um, I've got a couple more here. Well, maybe one more. Um, this is uh, a film called We're All Going to the World's Fair. And I don't know much about this one except it's from Utopia and it's brand new. And I saw that Dawn of the Discs and some others had listed it as a real favorite uh, of theirs. And it says, Late on a cold night somewhere in the U.S., teenager Casey sits alone in her attic bedroom, scrolling the internet under the glow-in-the-dark stars and blacklight posters that the blanket that blanket the ceiling. She has finally decided to take the World's Fail Challenge, an online role-playing horror game, and embrace the un uncertainty it promises. After the initiation, she documents the changes that may or may not be happening to her adding her experiences to the shuffle of online clips available for the world to see as she begins to lose herself between dream and reality a mysterious figure reaches out claiming to see something special in her uploads again fascinating i'm very curious about this film uh and the praise i've heard for it has got me excited it has an audio commentary with the director and star uh and interview with the director uh, Fantasia Fest Q&A, Chattanooga Festival Q&A, uh, walking tour, extended ending sequence booklet with interview with one of our kin and the director. I, I really want to check this out. This cover intrigues me. Utopia has put out a lot of really interesting newer films. So um, definitely curious about uh, we're all going to the World's Fair. This is actually high on my list of might watch it in the next week. Uh, just because it sounds really, really cool. So again, just showing you the breadth of stuff you get from these partner labels. There's just so much of it. And that's why I like to do these videos when I can to kind of give you just a sense of all that is available from these folks. Uh, last but definitely not least from um, one of my favorites, also Saturn's Core Audio and Video, we have Ravage, which... Um, looks pretty interesting and uh let's see here after witnessing the murder of his children at the hands of unhinged serial killer criminal psychologist gregory burroughs becomes consumed with the an unquenchable thirst for revenge while tracking the killer's gruesome trail of carnage he uncovers a violent underworld inhabited by a mysterious sect of bl cold-blooded assassins his journey culminates with an unforgettable climax of vengeance, an explosion of edge of your seat, uh, suspense, unexpected plot twists, and a high caliber hail of bullets and bloodshed. Uh, following the heels of Sinister, which is another release uh, they have put out from the great folks at Saturn's Core, uh, Missouri-based underground auteur Ronnie Sorter 
returned with his sophomore SOV uh, offering revenge and innovated a new and new vision that highlighted his trademark mix of kinetic action and gritty regional horror an astounding cornucopia of jaw-dropping action stunts and set pieces exploding squibs and pyrotechnics Hong Kong inspired gunplay and practical eye-gouging gore uh, effects Ravage remains a fortified micro-budget classic that continues to dazzle uh, adventurous fans and critics alike. I just, I don't know. Ever since Burglar from Hell and before, Saturn Score has been putting out these really interesting SOV video, sort of shot on video features, which is something I think a lot of people don't know a ton about. And they're doing such a great job curating them that I'm curious with each successive release what I'm going to think. Um, so this one has a newly restored director's final cut, an audio commentary with director editor uh, Ronnie Sorter, audio commentary with writer producer Byron Blakely, and director Ronnie Sorter, original 1997 shorter version, uh, a new optional retrospective commentary with uh, director Ronnie Sorter, archival cast commentary, uh, The Years of Ravage, a feature-length documentary chronicling the production of this, 100 minutes? I mean, gosh, this is just such an epic release already. Uh, outtakes, a uh, short film by um, writer-producer uh, Byron Blakey. You know, again, these labels are doing such great work, and I really just want to at least mention the titles and the features that you're getting because I know that it's sort of overwhelming to look at each month's slate and go, oh my gosh, there's so much here. What what should I get? What should I even think about getting? Um, so when I can, I like to just at least show you and talk about these titles, even if it's just me reading the back. Because some of these I, you know, I'm going to try and get to as quickly as I can, but there's so many coming every month that I just don't have time to watch all of them and get back to you about them. I just want to at least say, hey, look, this is what came out. Like, when I read the back of that, I'm like, I definitely want to see this one, you know? Uh, another great release, it sounds like, from Saturn Score. So, uh, that will do it for this uh, video, this episode. I thank you for watching. I thank you for listening. And um, I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.